How do we define multiple sclerosis? So as with most diseases, we define them as a clinical pathological correlate. In other words, you have a clinical presentation and under the microscope, when you look at the brain and spinal cord, you see a characteristic pathology. And the first person to bring together the clinical and the pathological features was uh, uh, Charcot. Uh, and he described uh, what we now call Charcot's triad. It was a, a woman in, in Paris who, did, who presented with slurring of speech, uh, double vision, uh, and unsteadiness of gait. And when she died, and the pathology was well described by Charcot, and that's when the first uh, ca case was described. It's important, though, that we can't always do brain biopsies to make the diagnosis, so what we have done is we've put together a set of polythetic set of criteria, and the principles of that are essentially a disease affecting uh, white matter structures, um, different white matter structures, separated in time and space. So you have to have essentially different attacks, you know, one occurring now, maybe one in the future, in different parts of the brain and spinal cord. And you have to exclude other potential causes. And that's kind of what we use to define the disease clinically. <clears throat> um, the pathology of the disease, so it's called multiple sclerosis because we see these multiple sclerotic plaques. And they tend to have a predilection for certain parts of the brain. Now, we now know that that predilection is based on what we see in macroscopic appearances. And under the microscope now, the, the pathology is everywhere. It's not only in white matter, but we also see a lot of it in gray matter. Actually, more than half of the disease burden is in, in gray matter. But uh, the original white matter plaques, they tend to occur around the ventricles, paraventricular, uh, subcortical underneath the cortex, and in the deep white matter. They also tend to affect the uh, optic nerves, brainstem, cerebellum, and upper cervical cord. And that's the characteristic uh, place where you find the macroscopic plaques. Under the microscope, uh, MS is characterized by inflammation. And this inflammation is cell-mediated. Uh, we tend to find a, 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 periv a perivascular, particularly around veins, infiltrate, which consists of mainly B and T lymphocytes uh, with a few uh, plasma cells and some macrophages. We don't normally find any polymorphonuclear cells in the neutrophils, for example. And then we have a, a inflammation extending into the tissue around the venules, uh, and the pathology there is that of a demyelinating pathology. And uh, depending on how acute the demyelination is, we may still see myelin debris uh, inside the macrophages and microglia where they clean up the, the damaged myelin. And that's called a, a, an acute plaque if it's got that. If you don't see any myelin debris, we talk about uh, chronic active or chronic inactive, depending on whether or not there are lymphocytes uh, in the plaque as well. But important thing, we have to have inflammation to define the disease. Um, and the other characteristic is the um, uh, demyelination, and we also get remyelination. Uh, and so if you look carefully enough, sometimes within the same plaque, you see areas of remyelination occurring with demyelination. And then we also get the glial response. So uh, as with any inflammatory disease of the central nervous system, there's microglia and astrocyte activation. Uh, and, and the uh, gliosis is uh, part of the pathology. Uh, and most lesions do show a variable degree of uh, neuroaxonal loss, which is part of the pathology. If you have to ask the pathologists what are the most characteristic features of this disease, uh, interestingly enough, the perivenous uh, cuff and it tends to be a liptoid. Uh, we call them Dawson's fingers because Dawson was the person who described them. Um, on the surface of the brain now, there's a so-called subpeel plaque, uh, and then we get these little B-cell follicle structures uh, in the meninges, which are also pretty characteristic of multiple sclerosis. So although the classic definition, uh, what I've just given you, um, is based on inflammation, um, the, the pathological characteristics should include Dawson's fingers, subpeel plaques and these B cell follicles in the meninges.